it is Friday. Get those glasses high in the sky because it is time for the last call and we are coming in hot. What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics, and this is The Last Call. That's right. That's that show where we're talking about comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. So these are going to be our picks, the books that we like that are hitting that final order cutoff. You want to get those orders in, guarantee your copy by Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern. Isn't that right, Jack? That's right. It's important to get those orders in. You can save the most money. You can help your LCS by letting them know how to expect orders, and you can also make sure you lock in that copy and you don't get left out and you're not sitting there Wednesday warrioring. And we're starting it with a great one. This is probably one of the hottest titles, especially for DC. And you know, we're talking about that Joker war. We're talking Batman number 96. Yeah, this is a plug and play pick, Brian, real easy to on a weekly basis to talk about Batman, um, whether or not we're talking about detective comics or we're talking about the main Batman title, or even that Nightwing series, we're seeing Joker War have effects on DC Comics readership across the board. So you know whenever we're talking about a Joker War issue, there's going to be attention on it. Certainly not going to be low printed. These books will be everywhere, but still they will be in demand and a lot of long-term value on this because every time there's a major Joker storyline, these series and sets get collected. Yeah, this has been one of the better Batman runs I've read in a while. Been saying the guy's name wrong on this yeah. channel, and I fully accept that. James Tynan, I kept saying James Tynan, I apologize, but epic run so far. I've really enjoyed this. I know some people might feel some other sort of way, but sales figures and hype tend to say otherwise. Here from Marvel, we get that giant size X-Men, not that giant size X-Men, but we're talking about Phantom X number one. This we got Rod Rice and John Hickman on this one. Yeah, and now, if you're not familiar with Phantom X, you're talking about a character that was created in the 2000s who has had immediate cult appeal. Um, you know, and we start to kind of try to find characters to compare Phantom X to as far as the way that he has kind of caught the attention of the secondary market. You start to think about names like Deadpool or Harley Quinn or Miles Morales in that it's characters that immediately caught the attention of speculators and investors. And it maybe has taken some time for the publisher to jump on board. But here we are years later, we're getting a Phantom X number one through these giant size X-Men uh, one shots. And I think that this is a character with the MCU getting these X-Men properties we don't know how big Phantom X could possibly be. So now is the kind of the time to be paying attention to this. So with the new release, of course, it's hitting the last call list. Yeah, and I actually like the variant cover for this. That's one of the main reasons outside the story why I wanted to put it on the final order cutoff list this week. Here we're talking Transformers, My Little Pony. Now, I know we talked about issue number one last week for Final Order Cutoff. That's been the crazy thing with comics since they've been coming back. We're glad comics are back, but Final Order Cutoff seems to shift by the day. So we got number one, but we also seem to see issues number two, three, and four on that list as well, which is pretty freaking weird. Yeah, you don't see that too often. Um, the, I think the last time I can remember seeing something like that was also from IDW with uh, the Clone Wars uh, miniseries. Um, we saw that hit FOC all at once. So I think you, you hit the nail on the head with the, coming back from the pandemic, um, publishing, kind of restarting. Some of these kind of timelines have gotten pushed aside. So that's why we're bringing this back up again. My Little Pony and Transformers, not for everybody, but the success of that variant cover from years ago from a convention certainly has indicated that there is some weird crossover with these two properties as far as their fan bases. So this miniseries has been the talk of social media, whether positively or negatively. And I think it's important to note that this whole miniseries is hitting FOC at the same time, because if issue number one is popular, 
It's not like you're going to be able to go and order more issue number two, issue number three, and issue number four. You're only going to be able to get the overages that Diamond has in stock. So this is something to pay attention to. If you were bullish on number one, you may want to pay attention and put your orders in for two, three, and four this week. And now it's time for that brand new segment on the show that we're calling the Indie Showcase presented by Black Cape Comics and BlackCapeComics.com. Black Cape Comics has all those great indie titles available for order for FOC at BlackCapeComics.com, as well as some of the most amazing exclusive variants independent comics has seen yet. So be sure to be on the lookout for those next releases on BlackCapeComics.com. Here we're talking about Ice Cream Man number 20. It's been a while since we talked about Ice Cream Man. Love this series. Read it all the time. It's one of those great horror anthology series. But I like this one also because of that variant they're soliciting for it in previews that has that Dr. Seuss type homage. I think a lot of people are going to like this. And I don't know how many shops will order it. Yeah, see, now, a lot of times on The Last Call show, we're very – reader buzz focused and that's really the intention of the show but it's important to highlight books like this where when we see a variant cover that we think has a good chance of kind of crossing over and hitting that secondary market appeal it's important to note it especially pre-foc and that's one of the values of this show so now you have an opportunity to go ahead if you think like brian thinks and i tend to concur um that this variant has a chance of breaking out you can get that order in pre-foc because Ice Cream Man, the series, has had a number of variants that have gone ahead and gotten the attention of the secondary market. I think this is one that could be as well. So make sure you head to BlackCapeComics.com and get that pre-order in. Here we're talking about another vault book. This is two times in the past few weeks that we're talking vault, and I'm super happy to do so. But we're talking about Vampire Masquerade number one. This is a Tim Seeley book. Yeah, Tim Seeley. Now, that is a name that brings immediate credibility to a project. You're talking about a guy who's worked on projects for the big two. But we're also talking about a property now, not just a creator-owned thing, which is what we normally talk about with vault comics. But we're talking about a role-playing game, tabletop game a game that has really evolved over the years you're talking about a, a game that was created in the 90s um so this is a property that has kind of stood the test of time has its kind of core niche audience and is now making its way into the world of comics vault has had a good string of success with their horror books and i think that this kind of p property play could be just what the doctor ordered for that. So pay attention to this one. This one's a big time sleeper pick for sure. They've got that great pulp variant that they put out similar to the way they used to do uh, those homage covers. And I think that those have tended to get the attention of the secondary market first. We've seen the last couple that they've done sell out at major retailers. Here we have from Titan Comics that Horizon Zero Dawn number one. I thought it was kind of funny because there's a lot of people in the comic community that saw it and got hyped over Peach Momoko. I didn't think anything about Peach Momoko. I'm a big fan of that PlayStation video game. If you haven't played that, it was one of the best freaking games out there. We got a new one coming out for PS5, plus the hype of Peach Momoko, plus Art Germ, plus some other great covers. Super excited to read this book. Yeah. You're also missing the fact that this is coming on the heels of what Witcher has done for Titan Comics. Titan has been kind of the brand that has seen this crossover between the video game community and the comics community. And a few years ago, if you were talking to me about a video game property, I would have had the snooze alarm on. Because while I love video games, they just never seem to go ahead and have that crossover into the comics world. Maybe some classic stuff but none of the newer games, yeah. but that, that is a thing of the past. We're Bloodborne seeing, did pretty well. Certainly, but we're still talking, you're still talking more modern. Yeah. And what we're seeing now is a trend where some of these uh, current video games are not only being adapted for graphic novels, but they're also now being picked up by Hollywood. And that was certainly an area when, if you think back to like 90s and early 2000s movies, there are a plethora of bad 
video game movies. The same way there were a bunch of bad superhero movies and television shows before they kind of finally got it right. And I think we're at that point. So I'm real bullish on these video game properties. I like this book. Now you mentioned the Peach Momoko variant, which certainly got everyone's attention. Be on the lookout for one of our channel sponsors, frankiescomics.com, who has a Peach Momoko virgin cover for this uh, regular price cover coming soon. But also you mentioned Art Germ. Not only is Art Germ on the cover A, but there are incentive versions of that art germ cover as well. Uh, there is a lot of great covers for this book. There's a lot of incentives that I think are under the radar for this book as everyone has kind of paid attention to Peach Pomoko. And if this property takes off like I think it has the potential to, it's those incentives that are gonna be truly the books to chase. You almost wish this was more timed with the new video game. I'm a huge video game. So you talk about video games, video game movies. I think video games nowadays have surpassed movies the stories that play out in video games now are way better than a lot of these movie scripts that you're watching um horizon zero dawn was one of them last of us you've seen talk of that being become movie property but the video game story it's one of those things where you're always like yeah but the book was better you always tend to be like yeah but the video game was better for our generation <laughs> Here we're talking about Bad Mother number one, which comes from that AWA Upshot imprint. We've talked about how we like these stories. And we talked about, we wondered how that momentum would be since the whole COVID and stop and distribution. And it seems to pick up and I'm glad it has. I'm really excited to read this book, aren't you, Jack? Oh, absolutely. You got Christina Faust, you've got Mike Diodato. You So again, just like we've seen with this Upshot imprint, you're bringing these A-list names. And with a title like Bad Mother, and the cover that you're getting here, um, you certainly see that you're in for something. And with that Mike Diodato art, it's definitely going to be stunning. Yeah, and if you guys are liking AWA and you're liking Upshot, you're liking these titles we've been talking about, they are going to be participating with us at Mainframe Comic Con, MainframeComicCon.com. That's going to be going on August 15th and 16th. We've got a bunch of great panels lined up there, including some of these great creative teams from AWA Upshot. Then here we have probably the biggest release coming on this final or cutoff list. And we are talking about Seven Secrets number one. We've been talking about this from Boom Studios. This is Tom Taylor's first creator-owned book, isn't it, Jack? Absolutely. Boom Studios made two major free agent signings in 2020, bringing Tom Taylor in as well as Al Ewing. Tom Taylor, if you're not familiar, you are probably already aware of his books. We're talking about the writer and creator of all new Wolverine, X-23, Laura Kinney as Wolverine. We're talking about the writer of the last few uh, Suicide Squad. We're talking about the writer of Deceased, as well as these current Deceased offshoots. And now, coming over to Boom Studios, we're getting Seven Secrets, as you mentioned, his very first creator-owned series. And couldn't think of a hotter publisher for him to be teaming with than Boom Studios. Now, Typically, a few years back, a guy with the level of heat that Tom Taylor has on his name, when he wanted to go and do a creator-owned book, this would have been an instant image comics thing. But if you look at the way the last couple of years in comics has gone, Boom Studios is starting to make more and more play for these creators and artists. And we've got Tom Taylor doing a Boom Studios book. And this book has gotten the attention of everyone in the hobby. This is the cover of Previews Magazine. This is the independent book that's gonna have people talk. That is why it is the main book here in the independent spotlight segment presented by Black Cape Comics. And there are some amazing covers for this book. We've got a Mercado one in 10, a Mercado wraparound one in 25. But Brian, that's not my favorite cover for this book. Is it yours? No, we have our favorite cover. And it is our very first Simple Man's Comics exclusive variant. We have teamed up and partnered with our buddies at the 616 Comics. And we have a very kick-ass, I might be biased, but I'm going to say it. I think it's the best cover of all of them. And we're talking about that Jung Yun Yoon variant, right? 
Absolutely. Now, there's a lot of people talking on social media about that Inhyuk Lee FOC variant, which it will be available for FOC. Make sure you get those FOC orders in at blackcapecomics.com. But our Jung Young Yoon cover, I feel like, can compete with the best of the best. So I'm with you on that. Plus, our cover features the main character, Casper, front and center, as well as that villain. And it comes amazing virgin cover art limited to 500 copies and only available at simplemanscomics.com and d616comics.com tomorrow at 2 p.m eastern standard time yeah so make sure you guys get your pre-orders in for that and that book will be releasing in august that's why we're talking about it for final order cutoff with those other books as well that's going to wrap up our main picks for books that are hitting final order cutoff. Again, that full final order cutoff list is available on civilmanscomics.com. But we're also going to tell you about those additional printings that are hitting final order cutoff as well. That's right, Brad. We got some great late printings this week, a few to note and one to talk about. All right, we've got Buffy versus Willow, number one, the second print from Boom Studios, as well as Star Wars Adventures. Clone Wars Battle Tales, number one, the second print from IDW. Marvel is coming with two Thor issues. We got Thor number three, the third print, as well as that hot Thor number four, second print. Now, from Image Comics, they're bringing Negan Lives number one, second print, but something that's important to note is it's actually an incentive variant. Stores can order them only in the number that they order a Firepower number two, and they don't get any second prints unless they order at least 10 firepower number twos so that's something to pay attention to and make sure you contact your lcs and get those orders in so there's guys those are picks and those additional prints like we said at the beginning of the video final order cutoff list has been kind of quirky right about now i know there's some books that we mentioned this week that we've mentioned last week or previous weeks but as long as they're showing up on that list we're going to keep telling you guys about it we think you the viewer should know if things slide as well but Comment down below. Let us know what you guys are liking for Final Order Cutoff. I'm hoping you guys are liking that Simple Man's Comics exclusive variant. But what do you think, Jack? Well, me too, Brian. But I want to say a special thanks to Black Cape Comics and BlackCapeComics.com, Frankie's Comics and FrankiesComics.com, and of course, the 616 Comics and the 616Comics.com. And I also want to thank the 16 thousand people in our community right now on Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. This has been Brian and Jack from Simple Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.